What's going on guys? Just hanging out in the pond with Casper after doing uh, my underwater gator tours today. So again, just a reminder, you can actually come out and do the tour with me and Casper and get in the water with us and get some sick photos. Uh, you can do that on my website, crocodilechris.com and come out and join us. But I want to talk about one of the common questions that we get about the alligators here. And uh, that's about breeding because Casper's in here with uh, multiple uh, girlfriends. So everybody's always asking about what do we do about breeding? Do they breed? Do we uh, neuter and spin? pay them or fix them what do we do uh so there's a lot of questions about that so uh right off the bat one of the more common questions is are they fixed and uh i have never heard of that being done with an alligator okay so as far as i know um there are no fixed alligators um i don't know of any of them ever being neutered or anything like that happening so nope that is not something that happens here because I've never heard of it being done in general. Maybe it has. I just don't know about it. Um, so yeah, no, they are not fixed in any way. Okay. Well then do they breed? Yes. All the time. Okay. Uh, yeah. In the breeding season. Okay. So in the spring, uh, it is an orgy. It is insane. Okay. Now they are not monogamous. He's got multiple girlfriends and it is a party. Okay. Put it that way. It is wild. So yeah, they do their own thing. And, uh, so they definitely, definitely breed. Okay. Now, what about the babies? Well, don't they have babies? Well, no, they don't have babies. They lay eggs, okay? Alligators and crocodiles lay eggs. And so when they lay the egg, when they're first laid, um, that egg is blank, just like a chicken egg when it's first laid, okay? So when it first comes out, there's nothing in there. You crack it open, it's just goo, okay? So what that means is at that point, we have a choice of what we want to do with the eggs. If uh, we go and we collect the eggs and then they are destroyed within the first month or whatever, there's no baby in there there's nothing going on in there whatsoever uh you're not killing baby alligators or anything like that because people really lose their minds about this they're like what you destroy them yes we do because we don't want an overpopulation of baby alligators because here at the rescue these guys are rescue nuisance alligators these are adult alligators that are caught out of backyards and swimming pools and things like this and so when that happens they are normally shot and killed and we try to give a home to these rescue nuisance alligators instead of having them killed now then if we're breeding a bunch of babies that we don't need then those are going to take up a lot of space we don't have the space for that we barely have the space for the ones we're trying to rescue so we would much rather prioritize rescuing more existing animals and not having them killed than, pro than to produce a bunch of baby alligators that we then have to take care of. Well, then people are like, well, yeah, but couldn't you just let the babies go? No, we're not legally allowed to do that. Um, there are many, many alligators in Florida. Um, I think they should all be protected, but unfortunately some people do think that they are overpopulated, which I would argue they're absolutely not. I'm pretty strongly uh, opinionated about that, but some people do think that. And so uh, the point being, they don't want you releasing them, okay? So it would be illegal for us to be releasing our captive baby alligators here without a proper pruning process and things like that. We can't just go let them go as a point. So if we were to produce baby alligators here, then we'd have to keep the baby alligators here. And we don't have the space for that, right? And we're trying to use the space, utilize the space that we do have for saving more adult alligators that are destined to be killed. So that's why we are not trying to produce baby alligators. And that's why we just don't incubate the eggs. That's the simple answer. They lay eggs, you collect the eggs, you don't incubate them, and then nothing ever happens, okay? So that is kind of the easiest way to handle that. And you're not killing babies or anything like that, you know? Uh, it's just blank, just like a chicken egg. It's just blank when it comes out, okay? Now, talking about the eggs and things like that, uh, we just had a pretty cool question uh, recently about what determines the gender of the baby alligator. And so they have what's called temperature-dependent sex determination. And so what that means is that the temperature at which the eggs are incubated is going to dictate the gender of the baby alligator, okay? We got one of his girlfriends right over here next to me too. Whoops, she just sunk under the water. She's swimming around over there. Maybe I can, uh, she's on the move pretty quick underwater right there. But, um, but yeah, so anyways, so if you do decide to incubate the eggs, then you can choose what gender all the babies are gonna be based on what temperature you are gonna incubate them at, which is really, really important for conservation of endangered crocodilian species because that means that you can skew the gender ratio to have more females. Ideally, you're gonna want more females in an environment because one male can breed with multiple females and then the females can only you know do one clutch of eggs. So that way we can have a bunch of females producing a bunch of eggs off of just a few males. So um, through that cap to breeding and then 
proper incubation tactic, you can really skew your gender ratios however you'd want for conservation purposes, which is really cool and interesting. Now, how do we remember what temperature the eggs go at, right? So the way I remember this, sea turtles do the same thing, this uh, temperature dependent sex determination. So at the beach is where the sea turtles lay the eggs. So the way I remember it is at the beach, you got hot chicks and cool dudes. Okay, so that's, that's how my brain remembers it. And then crocodilians, it's actually flipped. So in the swamp, I guess you get hot dudes, cool chicks. I don't know. It doesn't make as much sense. But remembering the sea turtle one makes sense to me. And then I just remember for crocodilians, it's actually flipped. Okay. So warmer temperatures are going to produce male and uh, males in the crocodilians. Okay. Now that has some, some uh, very important conservation uh, things around it though. Okay. So I'm getting a little distracted because he's moving around and that female's moving around too. Okay. So what I was trying to say is, uh, that does have some, some very important conservation connotations as far as climate change goes, because as it gets warmer in areas, uh, that's going to have a warmer incubation temperature for the babies. And that's going to lead to more males, which is not what we want. We want more females, uh, when we're talking about endangered crocodilian species. Now, the other thing about that too, is with globalization and deforestation, Station, what we often end up having is the first areas that do get developed are alongside uh, rivers and waterways where crocodilians would be breeding and they cut down the trees and then even if there's brush there's not as many big trees that offer shade so a lot of areas along rivers now get more sun than they should and that can heat up the nests to a higher temperature and then skew that gender ratio to be more males than females with warmer temperatures because of the deforestation going on. And then we add in climate change on top of that. And you can see how that can add to some pretty big problems. Okay. Um, so these are some fears that we have moving forward with climate change and whatnot. But, uh, but thankfully, Captive breeding programs for crocodilians have been very, very successful. And being able to control the gender ratios with that temperature control uh, makes it really, really useful. It's really cool stuff. But anyways, hopefully that answered a lot of the questions right there as far as uh, alligator breeding and, and crocodilian breeding, conservation, and then what we do here and uh, you know why we don't want to have a ton of baby alligators here at the facility either. So. Let us know what you think in the comments, guys. Like, comment, and uh, hit share, please. And let me know what other questions you'd like to be covered. Thanks.